and you know what happened? I played Flight Simulator, and I forgot <laughs> to post. <laughs> It, more twists than a pretzel factory, and I'm loving it. <laughs> it's just it's a great series. They're like, my Colorado at the end is going to look nothing like your Colorado. <laughs> Recording. There he is. Took him a little bit. And I was like, Craig, join podcast. And it was like five seconds went by. Like, God damn it, Craig. <laughs> Put down the alcohol. <laughs> Out of water. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Retro Rents Retro Gaming Podcast. It is our 63rd episode, and I am Al. I'm Nick. And, uh, yeah, I just got to make a quick apology. Uh, there was a little bit of a mix-up uh, about the past two weeks. Uh, basically, we recorded about three weeks ago. I edited the day after, had everything rock and rolling, ready to go. Uh, and I was going to post it on my lunch break at work. And you know what happened? I played Flight Simulator, and I forgot <laughs> to post the episode. And, uh, yeah, and I didn't realize it. Until I was looking at, like, our Google feed, and I'm like, how come, like, that's the episode we did a while ago. Where's the other one? Where's the you kids and your USB ports episode? <laughs> and and, uh, and then I was like, oh, fuck, I never posted it. <laughs> it's all edited, all ready to go, just sitting there. I was like, ah, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> so, yeah, that came out a little later. I will not forget that this weekend, uh, and we'll be, we'll be good to go. But what have you been up to, dude? Uh, just more of the usual, just, you know, it kind of playing, uh, you know, the same kind of sets of games. Nothing, nothing really new for me. I don't know. It, it feels weird because you know, I feel like I'm like, in, I was in this like little bit of a lull, you know, or, or, little a lull before we get into like, I think we're at the, we're at the tip of it now. It's kind of the fall yeah. slash, you know, getting into the holiday season of stuff. And I, I think I'm going to just break down and, and get some some uh, Game Pass Xbox or on the Xbox, but uh, PC. Just get the fucking Game Pass. Yeah, the Microsoft Game Pass is like because like all the crazy stuff's coming out. And it's like, yes, yes, yes. I mean, it's it's beginning. Crazy. I might even be able to use my 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 employee discount and get you a fucking deal on it if you're going to be a squirrel about it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but yeah, dude, it, I'll tell you, like, it's kind of an unsung hero right now, in my opinion. Like, Xbox Game Pass is great. Uh, I love it. But nobody really gives the PC one a lot of love. And it's not its not that people are downing it or anything. I just don't see uh, people talking about it. Because I gotta be honest with you, like it's a great selection of games. And there's a lot of stuff that's on there that's exclusive to the PC. And there's some really great titles. I mean, there's some crossover ones. And the really cool thing is that the majority of the ones that are on both Xbox and PC... The saves are transferable between the two. So, like, you could go play on your computer, and it's like, oh, I'm going to go lounge in the living room, play on my Xbox, play the same game, and it's the same save game, and, you know, you just pick right up where you left off. But, um, I mean, I almost feel like we're, we're getting to the point because when it was first introduced, what was it, last year, I think it was, right? Uh, After E3? Uh, was it last year, really? I think so. I don't know. Something like that. But maybe. I mean, maybe no, no. It, been like, uh, maybe maybe a yeah. little earlier because uh, I'm really like Sea of Thieves was part of it and that that goes way back to it. Yeah, it had no, it couldn't have been last year. Right, it had to be like, before two, that. That's two years Eight, ago. Yeah. Eighteen, yeah. Because uh, Sea of Thieves, I want to say, was one of the very first games they had on there. Yep. Yeah. And a whole bunch of indie titles and whatnot. They've been slowly adding more and more. And I I think it's also gotten to the point where it's kind of hit kind of a, a critical mass, if you will. Because it, you know, it's starting to get a lot of like big name games into it. Because like when it first started off, when we first saw it, like, oh, this is, this, you know, this is great, you know, subscription for gaming service, like it makes sense. But they had a ton of little indie titles, which isn't bad. But it's, you know, you're, you you got to admit the main draw is you know AAA games. And yeah, I, uh, I think it wasn't the Microsoft published ones. Exactly. Ones exactly. Their family. Exactly. And I don't think it was until at least within this last year where we got uh, like, you know, out, the Outer Worlds was in there. That was a big one. Yep. Um, and obviously, <laughs> as of recently, you know, uh, Red Dead uh, passed through there. Is yeah, it still Red on there, Dead I think? Too. Yeah. Yeah. Red yeah, Dead 2. Yeah. 
Outer Wilds went on there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, but now we're to like flight sim. Uh, I, I th- I th- well, and that's but that's one thing though that Microsoft said from the very beginning with Game Pass was that any Microsoft published game or game published in their like family of companies they bought would always come to Game Pass day of release. Yeah. And, and well, I think it's just the fact that and these, now these are, are all, yeah, yeah. Th- now they're hitting and now it's like it, yeah, it's hit that critical mass of like, yeah, we have all these other titles. We have all these indie titles, which is great. I mean, you can, you know, check out these little guys, uh, you know, I, I don't say for free, but, you know, all, as part of the subscription. And but you also have these big hit titles where it's like, yeah, people are going to want to play these. And like, it's, you know, it's a yeah. it's hit out of the gate. It's like, yes, that that's the way to do it. Obviously, if you really like it, you know, uh, I guess you could you could look to buy it, I suppose. Yeah, I doubt yeah they would you take can, it because out. they're not there forever. They're not, you know, a lot. I mean, aside from the Microsoft. But, so, yeah, except for the Microsoft one. Yeah. So uh, obviously it gives you give, lets forever. you preview it. Yeah. Uh, and then you can say, OK, yeah, I want to keep playing this. And if it ever goes out, then you know, obviously have forever on whatever platform. But, you know, it like, yeah. And I, th- I think it's finally hit that point. I think there's still you yeah. know a lot more coming in the pipe oh, and it's yeah. like it's gonna be great and the best part is if you do want to buy it it's almost always at a really decent discount like it's it, you're not buying it at full price either yeah you have like it's like their intro you know uh months or a year or whatever is you know cheaper than normal and then in following years will be kind of normal price i guess no 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 no. i'm talking about the games like if you decide oh, the games to themselves the game it's oh, kind of oh. like how gamefly did it like you know how gamefly mm. you could rent it and you could buy it kind of cheaper i see yeah uh, yeah they kind of do the same thing like i i've i've gotten games for as much as 15 bucks off and, that and I, I think there's other like discounts on like the microtransactions and things i know i've seen uh, you know i'll get a reference see if these uh because you know again still playing that and uh like they're they're microtransaction system is like you can get a discount if you're if it's through uh the game pass so it's yeah. like i don't know yeah. 10 15 percent off or whatever so it's like yeah it makes sense and i've i've said this before i know i have uh people can shit on on this generation of xbox and microsoft for not having great exclusive titles i don't think they care about that i think that's pretty <laughs> obvious <laughs> um, they really don't need it <laughs> they don't need it because they have easily built in my opinion, the best game subscription service I've ever used. It's simple. It's easy to find cool new stuff. It tracks what you download and starts recommending shit you might like. And normally those engines kind of suck for me because I have ADD of the game and I'll play pretty much everything. (laughs) But it's, it's recommended some really cool stuff I probably wouldn't have downloaded. Like, Carrion is a great example of that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, I'd seen it, and I was like, yeah, I remember we saw this at PAX. It was, it's kind of neat. I don't think it's my thing. And it's like, no, we'd really think you'd like this uh, based on this, this, and this. Uh, and it was showing me some of the Metroid, you know, Vania games I played, and I was like, okay. And I downloaded it, and I fucking loved it. I'm still playing it. Like, it's, it's one of those, like, I'm still going back to... It's a little, as far as Metroidvanias go, it's a little bit too puzzly for me, but I'm also being stubborn with it. Like, I don't want to look up walkthroughs on this game just because there's a yeah, lot just, of neat. Play it naturally, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of neat reveals to it, and I just don't want to read too far into it. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll work on it and chip away at it. But then, like, you have Microsoft doing what is easily now their biggest uh, exclusive title. Uh, and it's probably been their best in years, and that's Flight Sim 2020. Um, yeah. Holy shit. Um, I okay. So <laughs> where to <did it> start? <laughs> wow, wow. Um, obviously, if you've watched YouTube videos, uh, streams, uh, yes, it does look that good. Um, I have a pretty beastly gaming machine. I built it after I started working at the new job. And, or no, I built this. I forget when the fuck I built this. But um, it's a recent computer, so it can run it just fine. And it is a gorgeous game. Like, I, I have never seen a flight sim look this good. And now you have where they're interlinking some streaming to it for live weather services, which I have my beef with. And and y'all that listen to this, like if it's something maybe misconfigured on my machine or it's a bug in the game or something I need to do to get past this hiccup, but like if I do a live weather, like it doesn't show any precipitation. It's 
is really weird. Because, like, I flew into Hurricane Laura, and uh, I was expecting to get, you know, blown out of the sky and thrown in the ocean. And uh, <laughs> it was three knots of wind, and it was just a big, thick blanket of clouds. Looked cool as fuck. Like, let's get that out of the way. Like, I, I flew up to about, I was in a jet, flew up to about 20,000 feet and was above the hurricane. And that was some of the most beautiful um, cloud coverage, just effects, whatever you want to call it, man. Like, it's probably the closest I'd ever get to seeing, like, the top of a hurricane. And it was just mind-blowing. And I think that's where uh, Flight Sim 2020 really, really shines. Like, I, I, was, I think I was talking to you about this, Nick, and I was talking to a couple other people uh, at my job. And, I'm, I, you know, I went out and I got the HOTAS set up. I got, a, you know, a throttle pad, you know, a pad with a Thrustmaster mm -hmm. throttle, and I got the Thrustmaster uh, control stick. And where I find this game to be wicked, wicked zen is, you know, in the COVID world right now, Traveling is not uh, a recommended thing to do. And granted, I wasn't traveling much since I had kids. Um, it's just we really haven't been in a spot to do that until I, I had gotten a new job. And then just as we were kind of like, all right, we took care of all the big shit that we've been needing to take care of that we just couldn't do, you know, in a check to check life. And we're just about getting ready to plan a vacation, and then fucking the virus hits. So, you know, it became one of those, like, man, I really want to do something. I really want to travel now and go somewhere, and I can't. And this game hits, and I was like... I, I remember we were, we were talking about it on the last show. I had started making a list of, like, if I could go anywhere and I could fly anywhere, what <laughs> yeah, do I want to see? Places to go. You know, what do I want to see? Um, I flew... So let's see. I have not gone to the Hobbit set yet, even though I oh, said that was one of my first. I destiny. thought that was going to be your first, yeah. Uh, I tried to find it, um, but I sucked at navigation, uh, and that should not have been my first attempt. I'm much better now. Like I literally got to the point where I found the local airfield uh, down in the town where I live, Nick, which is literally a cornfield, uh, <laughs> and followed all the roads that you've driven to get to the house. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And flew to the house. Um, it was a trip, and but I, so I could probably find it now. But then I started picking out other stuff that I wanted to see. I flew over um, what I'm pretty sure, based on what I was looking at, the Weta Workshop. I, I went, flew over that in New Zealand. Uh, I almost felt like I could see them making props. Uh, but the, <laughs> the cities are beautiful. I flew over the Sydney Opera House at night. I flew over. Uh, what, let's see some of the cool stuff I checked out. I checked out, um, b -b -b I think I sent you the picture of it. I flew by, uh, the Tower of London. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to, I was going to free some prisoners with a nosedive, <laughs> uh, but it's just, it's absolutely stunning. Um, anywhere you can imagine you can go and it is just based on artificial intelligence, uh, cloud AI streaming, some really wicked artificial intelligence they have to actually reconstruct cities based on satellite mapping. Um, and it's, I mean, it's not perfect. I mean, it thought our local CVS because of how big it was, was a giant warehouse. So I mean, <laughs> not perfect, but you got the idea. Um, but it's an absolutely gorgeous game and you can literally pull up the uh, free flight mode, which is literally a picture of the earth. And if you have live weather on, you can actually see the fucking weather that's all around the world. Like, Hurricane Laura was a giant fucking hurricane in the middle of the Gulf. Um, and you can just click in the middle of the ocean if you want and say, set as arrival, or as, you know, uh, destination. destination. Set as destination. And that's where you start. And you can just fly to your heart's content. So you run out of fuel, or you can set fuel to unlimited and uh, see just how dedicated you are to try to fly around the world in one city. I don't recommend it. Um, San Francisco from Philly was enough for me. <laughs> yeah, I, was, uh, there, I think there's, uh, you know, I, again, it, 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 I always find it intriguing when, you know, you know a game is like, I, I wouldn't think it would be as popular as this, but I think 
if, if this game had released under any other conditions, it probably wouldn't have. But I, th- I think you're right. I think it's because of COVID. I agree that this game has become as popular as it is just for the very reason like, of like, like you, Animal you, Crossing. You, yeah, yeah. It's just like you can travel in 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 a, in a, in a <laughs> in an age when we cannot travel. Yeah, and it's like. It's as close to real as you can imagine. I mean, I flew over our local ski resort, and it was just like, oh my god, like, it, this is so spot on. Like, it's just beautiful. And it just makes you like, well, what's all the other stuff in the world I wanted to see? Like, I, I did a nice lap around Christ the Redeemer in Brazil. Mm-hmm. Um, you know? And like, oh, and then... I, I thought of you, Nick, and our, our internship, uh, and the first time I met you, and I took off in a puddle jumper out of New Delhi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and let me tell you something. I mean, I've always had respect for you, but after taking off out of there, holy shit, dude, my hat's off. <laughs> um, it's wow. nuts, isn't it? <laughs> wow. That is a crazy airfield. <laughs> um. And but I'll tell you what though, uh, from the air, that's a beautiful study. Um, and I will, but I will say, uh, a more depressing experience uh, that I had, because again, I'm just a, a, a hobbyist of history and, and goings on in the world. I took off out of Pyongyang Airport oh. in North Korea, mm-hmm. and I flew south and flew over Pyongyang. I'm still waiting for North Korea to like find a way to cancel that so we can't do it anymore (laughs) um but it's it's kind of it was kind of depressing because like flying through the city like you see those really tall um you know housing condo complexes like the white ones like if you watch the vice documentary on north korea you've seen it and it looks exactly like that and it was just like wow like this is this is like the one spot in North Korea and that's where pretty much everybody is. But as you fly out, it's like kind of empty, desolate little farms and stuff. It was really eye opening. Like, and I'm sure they're not showing everything obviously, but I didn't make it as far as the military zone. I I wanted to do that just to see what would happen. But um, I'll tell you, man, like you think of it, you can go there. Um, My, my project this week is I want to fly two and then the entire length of the great wall of china Uh, so that'll be that'll be my next destination but i'll tell you (laughs) what man uh i can't recommend it enough get game pass and get flights in 2020 i know you're still waiting on your hotas setup oh yeah so in the meantime you could play wasteland 3 which we'll get to later oh yes so what else are you gonna do it uh so uh, so uh, but I, I don't know. Do we cover this? So I'm watching Man in the High Castle season two. I think we mentioned that. Uh, more twists. More. T- I don't know if we mentioned. You know what? We we mentioned it before. It was it was our we preamble. It it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like so Man in the High Castle radio before. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so watching Man in the High Castle. We're in season two uh, as part of the Twitch Watch Party that I do on Mondays. And oh man, it's it more twists than a pretzel factory, and I'm loving it. <laughs> It's just it's a great series. I mean, you know, it's it's Phil K. Dick, you know, uh, no, you know, based off a of Phil K. Dick novel, and I mean, his stuff's pretty mm-hmm. pretty, twi- you know, crazy as it is. Oh yeah, but he's and, the pretzel meister. He is. He really is. But yeah, but it, it's it's in a good way. It's not it's not like you know M Night Shyamalan twists. You know, it's like yeah, we're we like, gotcha. Wow, <laughs> yeah, you really pulled that one out of your ass. You know, it, like no, it makes the twist. It's like okay, I, I you know I didn't see this coming, but I, I can I can run with it, and it's like okay, and yeah, just it, uh, I'm completely hooked. So can't wait to continue uh, doing that. We're about halfway through season two right now, and uh, doing yeah, that. And- I jumped in and joined you for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I jumped in. Um, it was awesome. How does how does that work? Like, how do I like? I was on my phone, so that's probably why. Oh, it didn't okay. Work. Yeah. So uh, but, yeah. So it only works when you're watching on PC. Like it's like okay. it's it's one of the things. That it's like it's everyone grumbles about is that the the Twitch app really sucks for a lot of things, and it's only good at yeah. doing like one thing, and that's just yeah. simply watching the streamer. Period, and that that's about it. So if you if you're doing a Twitch watch party, you get, one you got to make sure you're on PC uh, when you're enabling it, 
And then also when you're watching it too, because you basically have to bring up two screens. One's the Amazon uh, link uh, that'll sync it okay. up with what we're watching. Okay, uh, let's say it'll sync it up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we we have like you know in in what I've done with the Expanse and now in in Man in High Castle, basically you know it will be synced with everyone else that's watching it through the Got system. It. So you don't have to like okay. try and queue up and like you know find the time code. It'll do that. It'll, you know if you come in half hour, hey, you know, late. It will as soon as you you know punch it up, it'll come into exactly right where there. we're okay. at. Yeah, um, I might have to just join you just to finish season two. I never. Yeah, did. there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, and then obviously you you have the the you know, the streamer up, and so you can see the reaction talk and you know that kind of stuff. Yes, you had a very intense stare. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, you know, very. It's what I do. I, I'm like I'm like trying to figure things out. It's like what is going this on? This son of a bitch was <laughs> in the zone. Like you know how like. <laughs> You watch Sherlock with Benedict Cumberbatch, and he gets that weird foggy look in his eyes, <laughs> and the gears start moving. That's exactly how you look. That's and it right. Was awesome. <laughs> it's just like, what uh, is going on? Trying to figure this thing out. Where are we going? <laughs> it was great, man. That was yeah, a lot it, of fun. I'll have to actually like join on PC one time. Oh yeah, yeah. And then you know, if you're starting it, basically you'll have a button on the side that says, you know, Twitch Watch Party. You click on that, it'll bring up a, a menu of like you know what's available, and it'll list, it'll also list um what's globally available. So there there are some things, uh, and you know, uh, I say they resolve this, but when it first right. started, anybody outside of the U.S. could not join, could not join in. So I have some okay. international viewers over in uh, the U.K. that he's like, yeah, I can't watch, you know, it's, but I have Amazon. It's like, oh, suck, man. But he's like, I knew they yeah. were working on it, but now, now they fixed it. So basically if it's, if the programming is available globally on Amazon prime, then chances are that Twitch watch party will then allow them to, uh, see it along with you. So they, they kind of yeah. help, help fix that. And you just click yeah, it sure. and you, you know, you say, you say go, and then it does like a little countdown on your side and you know, Twitch watch party en enabled essentially. That's pretty, pretty simple. Wicked. Oh pretty yeah. Wicked. No, I'll have to. I'll have to do that. I, I I've been thinking more and more about that lately, and uh, I I would love to to do something like that. I, my wife and I were talking about it. Like we're we're kind of private hermits, and some you know, people <laughs> have seen me stream of order and some deal. But we were thinking about doing something together, and we wanted to do it more like uh, more like a riff track where it wouldn't be showing our faces, but we would be doing our commentary. Yeah, I mean, you, you could easily uh, do that. I, know, I think several channels do something like that, where it's like, yeah, the, uh, obviously you have to transmit something. So, but yeah, you yeah. know, it's basically a blank screen or whatever. Um, you, can, you don't transmit the the show because then it'll start. You know, it'll jump on you with DMCA stuff. But um, but yeah, you can just have like you know a splash screen up, and then yeah, just you know transmit audio essentially. Exactly that. Yeah, yeah, we'll figure something out. But I'd love to do that. I mean, just some of the shit we've been watching lately. The, the most, the mo some of the most fun we've had. I, I mentioned on the last show we were watching. We've been watching Twin Peaks, and um, yes, like that Twin Peaks. And we got <laughs> to season two, and we're working our way through that. And like season one had this perfect. Uh, no, season one did not have the perfect ending. I'm thinking of uh, halfway through season two where they should have ended it. Um, season one, you know, ends like fucking Dallas. Like, who shot fucking Agent Cooper? And it like turned into this whole thing. Um, and but we've been really enjoying it. And like this, we got to a part with season two where like all the shit fell into place. All the David Lynch weirdness like got tied up in a perfect way. Where you're like, wow, all right, like I get it. It's a little supernatural, but it was really fucking awesome, and it was a really great. Um, explanation for how all this went down. And you're like, yeah, that was good. And then it's like, oh, wait, there's five more to go. What the fuck are they doing? And um, and then it starts involving the one character's father, who was the uh, general in Stargate SG-1, the ball guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hammond, yeah. Hammond, yes. And uh, he... he uh, <laughs> He, he like takes him on a fishing trip, and then there's fucking aliens or something, and that's where we left off. We're like, all right, <laughs> um, this should have ended that episode before, but we'll see what happens when we pick this up again. And um, but yeah, it's it's been enjoyable. Um, but the thing I've had, aside from what we'll talk about in the release highlights, uh, game wise, the thing I've had the most fun watching this week, I posted about it on Twitter, 
and I was trying to even like I posted on the save point with uh, kind of as an assignment for all of y'all if you have Netflix to watch this because it's amazing. Uh, it's high score on Netflix. Uh, have you heard of this, Nick? So uh, I, I, I guess it just debuted. Is that what it is? Yeah. Or, uh, okay. Because yeah, week. I'm hearing it from everyone. You know, not only did I hear from you, but it's like you know, a lot of you know, my friends on Facebook and everything, they're all saying the same thing. It's like, like this is my childhood. It's like I gotta see this thing. I haven't seen it, it yet, but oh. <laughs> like I think I'm gonna make it a point this week. That's your homework tonight. Yeah, that's that's um, my homework. It is a uh, the best produced uh, video game documentary. I, I had King of Kong up in that number one seat for a long time because that That's was a, a very one. well, beautifully produced documentary. This blows the doors off. Um, they really went above and beyond in the production, and they cover a lot of amazing ground in the six episodes. Now, I'll, I'll caveat this with... I'm just starting episode four. I was going to watch it tonight uh, before we went on, but it is so special to childhood for both my wife and I. I was like, no, I got to save this and watch it with her. Um, But I will say, uh, it is not, a lot of people will say, well, it's missing this and it's missing that. And and it doesn't have everything and, and they can't have everything. But what I really appreciate is that they're featuring a lot of stuff that doesn't normally get talked about in these documentaries. Um, one of one of the things that really made me happy, and again, it's one of those things. Up until this came out, unless you were like a video game history nut that just liked reading about this shit, you wouldn't know. Like, it, nobody ever really covered it before. No one was like, "Oh, you know." It, when they cover the heroes of gaming, you always kind of hear the same names, you know, that, that always come up. And the first episode was covering kind of the transition to cartridge consoles, a console that could actually play more than one game. It wasn't just a built in circuit board that did just Pac-Man or just space invaders. All that, that takes up a wonderful portion of that first episode. You're like, Oh my God, like it's just amazing. And, um, but anyway, they highlight the work of Jerry Lawson. Um, he's a black engineer. That uh, was the late seventies, I believe, and he is the person that invented like the video game cartridge and a console that could play it, so that you could actually have a system that could play more than one game. And it was called the uh, I think it was the Fairchild Channel F. Um, it did not. Um, become obviously as well known as the Atari did just because Nolan Bushnell is an insane marketer like he's just above and beyond but like they were the first ones to get there and Jerry Lawson like built it in his garage and like they interviewed his kids and you could just see like they were so happy to see like that his work really got featured as a critical part of our gaming history and it really is like if if you really think about it, like you would not have a games library if it wasn't for that concept. Like he he thought like, hey, like we should be able to do more than one game on these things, and he built a system to do it. It's just so cool um, to see what they had. And then like the second episode goes into the rise of Mario and Nintendo and how you know they they interview Shigeru, they interview all. I mean everybody, like every big name you can imagine. Nice. Uh, they talk about like the Nintendo Game Counselors, the Nintendo World Championships. Like, it, it, if you had a Nintendo growing up, like this, this episode will just tickle the heartstrings. And uh, but the third episode is the one that just like got my heart a beaten, and that was where it was talking about a lot of the the PC stuff. You know, like the rise of adventure games on computer. Mm. And, they interviewed Ken and Roberta Williams from Sierra. Like, it, they haven't done interviews <laughs> like like to this degree in a long time. Like, they're retired. They've been sailing, but I think they're actually writing a book now on the history of Sierra. And um, so, but it was just so great to see them in this documentary. And like, it, it, what I loved so much about it was that it really was more focused on Roberta, his wife. And Roberta Williams, like, 
she's the one that gave the rise to adventure games. They like games up to that point were were text based, you know, and go north, and there were some great games like that, like Zork and all that stuff. <clears throat> but she was the one that was like, no, it has to be more. Like there has to be graphics, and they made the first game, which was ah, gotcha, not King's Quest. Uh, <laughs> Sierra game was called Mystery House. And it was the first adventure game that had graphics. And, you know, I mean, obviously, if you look at it today, it's like, holy crap. But for, you know, for the day, it was just mind blowing. But yeah, she is also the person that invented, well, invented, designed, created King's Quest. Like, that's her baby. And that created, like, most of adventure gaming and, and games as we know it, because it pushed, like, every envelope. But anyway, like, you, you see what I'm getting at. Like, this documentary is amazing. Uh, and they got oh, tons of bonus points for featuring uh, the lead uh, exhibit in my Hall of Heroes, which is Richard Garriott. They go, they go into a whole thing with Richard, and it's awesome. Uh, like <laughs> watch him like DMing a D and D session; it's just fucking beautiful. But um, he talks about like they highlighted Ultima Four and Quest of the Avatar and how it, it really changed RPGs up to that point and really kind of established the foundation of a lot of the open world games we have today where you actually had conscious choices that would affect like how your character is viewed. Like that was never done before. Like in a an RPG like the original three Ultimas and Might and Magic and anything else that came out back then, like you could just go and kill everybody in town, steal all their shit, uh steal the magic swords and then go, you know, and beat the game. And it's like you end up not being much better than the guy you're going after. <laughs> and uh, Ultima 4 challenged you to be virtuous, and it was the f probably the first game that did that as an RPG. And uh, I just love that they highlighted that, highlighted Richard's work, and um, it was just very cool. Like, I, I can't tell you enough, Nick. Like, you watch that tonight, you'll probably binge through the whole goddamn thing before you go to bed. It's just that I'm good. sure. But, um... All right. Oh, no, you have one more line here I have to hear about. Random YouTube algorithm. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so I, I got a hold of my own on YouTube, so I can't oh, wait yeah. to hear that. Oh, yeah. Cause, I mean, you know, I, I, another side effect, you know, more or less of COVID. I mean, granted, you, even before COVID, this is kind of a thing, but I think I feel like it's even more so because, like, sometimes you're just like, oh, I just, I just need, I need something. Give, give me something, YouTube. Give me something. And, yeah. you know, it's randomly, you know, the algorithm will pick out these, these, Odd in videos for you to, you know, to try and like, you know, get you to watch whatever. And for some reason, this came up and it was uh, British canal boats, uh, specifically vlogs. And apparently there's a whole bunch of these, these people out there doing this. And it, it is, it is, I, I can't even say it's bizarre. Like it's, it's the, it, again, we talk about like these Zen things. He was like, it's another Zen thing. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll throw it out. There's, there's a guy called cruising the cut. Um, All right. I'm very, very chill dude. And he does a whole bunch of, you know, a ton of vlogs of these canal boats. And to give you a reference, think of, you know, these canal boats used to be both the boats and the canals themselves were used originally uh -huh. back, back right. during the industrial revolution of transporting coal from yeah. the mines to, you know, the cities and whatnot. And that's what these were used for. But, but nowadays, like th there's no point to that. So now uh, of the canals that still exist and are, you know, kind of maintained. So they kind of serve multiple purpose. One, it becomes like kind of a footpath for pedestrians and runners and, you know, uh, people who exercise, but then these boats still exist. And there's, I, don't know, I forget how long they are, like, you know, uh, not 50 feet, but, you know, I don't know, somewhere between like 25. Yeah, maybe they're not 50. very big from what I'm looking at. Yeah, but they're they're essentially houseboats, though. And you think, you know, for like oh, Americans, you think houseboats, like it's a big old square thing that floats. Well, for these guys, it's it's basically one long, thin boat that, you know, basically your rooms are stretched out. And so instead of like being a big square, it's, you know, think of it along as a long yeah. rod. And it's, it's the most cool thing. It's like, this, this is awesome. Like, you know, like if I ever go back to the UK, I'd love to like, you know, just, you know, <laughs> spend a day Look on a canal. This dude. Yeah. 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 Oh, and you asshole. I just subscribed <laughs> to this. Like, I'm like, I'm immediately fascinated by this. Yeah. This yeah. No, that cool. was the thing. It's like, it's like, I was like, what is this? Click. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Look at this thing. So it's kind of this blend of like, 
old it's world cool. history and kind of a blend of new because you know it, it, in in the old in the olden days like basically these boats were towed by horse well now the the tow right. path as it's called is you know you know horses are no longer on it that's where the, you know the joggers and whatnot you know yeah people around yeah. are but you know another map powered by mm-hmm. you know diesel motors uh, some are electric you know you know the modern amenities of of water travel and it's not fast it's not don't think like speed boats no, you know like you're no, gonna be blazing down this yeah, is like it's, it's maybe like, what 10 knots if you're lucky yeah like yeah like yeah 10 knots is basically equivalent of like probably like five miles an hour would be how, like how fast you're going it's it, yeah but it's it's just very chill and like a lot of the the mechanics are still there so there's lock systems so this still i mean i think this still exists in the u.s in terms of like the ear you think the erie canal i would think like, so things like that so uh, you know i'll have to check to see if there's you know if the american equivalent still exists today but you know there's locks so there's all these manual things so they're getting off and having to crank you know the yeah. doors shut opening you know the water paddles and things like there's a whole process to it and Aeroboat trip stratford de wooten yeah and like all these other aspects are like going through various tunnels still exist um there's you know uh kind of exchanges between the canals and larger waterways so there's one that connects the thames there's others that connect to like other big lake things and so like there's these huge mechanical elevators and you know uh uh, I don't know, not teeter totter, but you know, ba- basically, you know, like weight systems for transferring ships, or you know, these ships, but uh, yeah. the boats from the canal, you know, side to like a, a, another, yeah, another body of water. And again, it's just like this this very old industrial revolution, you know, era stuff that you know is still exists and works today. And it's just and it's just very cool, to, like see this this other world, so to speak. You've totally fucked my Monday. <laughs> It's like, and it's perfect. It's perfect for having like on the background, like I'll be doing work and yeah. I'll like have it on. He's like, he just quietly narrates and it's very chill. And he's just like, yeah, this is, this is awesome. I, I, I'm subscribed already. <laughs> like, <laughs> and yeah, like cruising the cut is like the one, one guy I've been like following the most, but there's plenty of other like vloggers that do like very similar stuff is like their lives. Uh, you know, it's some, like, you know, some people live on the canal um, yeah. like that's that's their home I some, see some is their livelihood shit, oh yeah some of them are gorgeous yeah and that's you know gotta be so peaceful yeah and, and it's it's so cool and because they do so many vlogs they have it like you know all you know vlogs from all year round so there's like how uh, do you you know how do you live there in the winter you know how do you know what what is you know what do you do during the summer and then you know the trials yeah. and tribulations of going up and down and you know even even more recently with you know dealing dealing with covid and coming out of lockdown wow. so yeah, I'm look, I just see his uh, channel intro video. He looks like Dave. Yeah, in the <laughs> yeah that Dave face. <laughs> That's cool, man. I, I'm really going to check that out. Like, I like finding shit like that. Like, I don't know, like just random stuff, like day in the life stuff. It's why I love that that Terry Jones Medieval Lives documentary so much. Like, it's just so cool to look at life through the lens of a very specific profession or hobby you know that's especially when it's an uncommon hobby like all yeah. right you know i've seen people make knives and i love it i love watching blacksmithing videos it's it's incredibly relaxing but like something like this instantly fascinates me because it's just like oh i, I want to know more about this oh yeah and, and that was the thing like when i stumbled upon it, it's like i didn't even think something like this existed but now that i watch it, it's like yeah it makes sense that this still exists <laughs> in a yeah. way that's so cool man no i'm definitely gonna check it out Check it out for sure. All right, let's move on to release highlights. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> a high score on Netflix. We already talked about. Seriously, go watch that. It's great. Uh, Wasteland 3 just came out yesterday. I've been playing the living hell out of it. I've probably got a good five hours in at this point. Uh, and based on every review I've read, I got a long way to go. Uh, they said <laughs> it's a massive game. And I, but every review has basically hit on the head that it is an awesome game. Like, and I, I completely agree. It's the best in the series, without a doubt. It's incredibly fun. Nice little challenge, and putting it down on even story mode difficulty makes it perfect. If you just want to like have a little bit of a challenge and just enjoy the story, which is awesome. The story in this game so far is just immediately gripping, and um. They actually had to put a disclaimer 
that basically said like, hey, um, events in this game are fictional and uh, were written about two and a half years ago and unfortunately are starting to mirror a lot of everyday present life. <laughs> and that was not our intention. Um, but it does. And it's uh, if you've ever played the Wasteland games, they're very dark humor. Um, very, very dark in subject. Not not in like, uh, you know, uh, trigger every five seconds kind of thing. It's not. But it, it's just... It doesn't pull any punches, and sure. it, it's it's a grim picture of like the death of the American dream, and it really radiates with a lot of what we're seeing today. Uh, don't let that turn you off to it. Uh, it really, I, I have to say, I agree with a lot of the reviewers. They're they're putting it in like the top three with like Planescape Torment and Divinity Two: Original Sin, and they're like, and Wasteland Three is right up there. Um, <clears throat> it's fantastic. Uh, if you have Game Pass, you can go grab it right now. It's part of the Game Pass subscription. Uh, I wound up pre-ordering it just because um, I adore In Exile Entertainment, and you know, just in that whole full disclosure route, they had given me uh, an advanced preview copy of Bard's Tale Four uh, when that was just about to hit, and I just I was so touched by that. Like, you know, they they I sent a couple. A sample episode, and they were just like, "Yeah, here, have it. This is great. You know, we'd love to hear you talk about it." And um, and so I was like, "No, like, I, I, I am looking so forward to this. I'm buying this game, and um, I, it, I'm telling you, it's the best, uh, Brian Fargo. It is your masterpiece. It is really, really, really good. Um, I can't wait for all y'all on the save point that have Game Pass. You too, Nick. When you get it, mm-hmm, I cannot mm-hmm. wait to talk about this game with people." Because it's great. Like there's so many moments where I'm like, oh my god, I wonder how you handled that situation. Because there are, and this is where the reviewers are really like, mind blown, is there are tons of branching choices in this game, and they're hard choices, and they're like, they're like the amount of epilogues this game has just based on the way we've played it. It's pretty fair to say, like. They're like, my Colorado at the end is going to look nothing like your Colorado. <laughs> like, and that's awesome. I like, love, I that. love yeah. that. There's I such variety. That. And like, I've read reviewers that were like, I've been playing for 80 hours. I think I'm getting to the end. And I can't wait to go back through and make all different choices. Like, it's that good. Yeah, it's so really it allows good. for that replayability. And, and like you said, like, you, you know, you can watch vicariously and see someone else make completely different decisions. Yeah. And it, it's a real web. And the, the reviewers are like, that's such a dangerous thing to do in programming. <laughs> you have to keep track of all that shit. Oh, yeah. And they're all minor permutations to dialogue and everything else. And they're like, and they've done it. And it's a masterpiece. And it's beautiful. So, yeah, go check out Wasteland 3. Go give uh, In Exile Entertainment some love on Twitter. Um, they're, they're just an awesome group of people. And I, I've just been singing their praises for the past two days. They really deserve it. The game's a fucking home run, man. It's so good. Um, other release highlights: Avengers, I believe, is coming out this week, right? Uh, I think so. is it, is it this week or next week? I don't fucking remember. It might be next week. Uh, yeah, the week after this one coming. Uh, but I did want to. I wanted to make a quick update uh, from the last show. The last show, I think both Nick and I were kind of like, eh. September fourth, um, so next week. Next week, okay. I, th- I think this is the last beta weekend. I think that's what this is. Well, that's what it is. Yeah, I mean, we were both kind of uh, not even lukewarm on it, but I will say uh, I did get a chance to play the beta, and my opinion has shifted. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, you know, not going crazy over it, but I think this is going to be a fun little jaunt. I do. Yeah, like, I, hey, I, I feel like I'm a superhero, yeah. and th- this is just a you know it, it, it's all about doing the wobble combo but uh it, it was a it lot, of fun. lot of fun uh it, 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 it had its technical drawbacks at least on my side i don't know if you encountered yeah, this at I all but it, like there's a lot of a lot of hitching in the cutscenes. it seems yeah i had a couple there for sure okay okay so it wasn't just me then wow. okay um yeah, i'm hoping i'm hoping it's just an early build and they'll fix it you know you know slash day one patch yeah. you know by the time it gets to next week but uh <clears throat> Yeah, like I, I'd say it's probably worth a buy to you know maybe even get you know gets down to a discount type of thing. Yeah, I think uh, you know, and definitely hands down if it hit, hit, hits some kind of a pass. Um, I mean it's under Square Enix, so I don't know if we've seen any Square Enix no. games 
on any of the past stuff so far? Not to my knowledge, no. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I will say that um, let's wait and see how the first couple weeks go in launch. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. If anybody's thinking about jumping. Uh, as I did run into a couple issues, like trying to connect to a game with some rando, like I fucking, I, I got so frustrated. It was like I wanted to start my own mission and I didn't block it off from people for joining. Oh. So I, just wanted to do an, I wanted to do an AI companion and someone jumped in. So I was like, all right, cool. And it fucking resets the timer for a full minute. And I'm like, oh, oh okay, no. Fine. And I'll sit here. And we got to the end of the minute and nothing happened. And I was like, okay, the fuck? And then it booted me out of that, you know, trying to get that session on the mission map. It's like, all right, motherfucker. And then I went in, did it again. The same dude jumped in, so it wasn't like there was a lot of people playing. (laughs) I was like, all right, man, like, you want to play with me, I want to play with you, we want to play, we're going to do this together. Got down to a minute, and nothing. And then he dropped, and I was like, son of a bitch. And then the timer, like, was, was back to, like, 15 seconds because it was just me and then somebody else jumped in and it reset to a minute i was like fuck this i'm done <laughs> uh, you're so trolling here man i hope they fix that but um but i i could see that being wicked fun if you're playing with some of your friends like i could yeah, see that being a lot yeah, of def- fun definitely the fact that it, like i think i remember seeing co-op you know was mentioned back when uh, at the last yeah. e- e- well, i mean i know it is now but i back when we first saw an e3 and can we kind of got that you know it's like it was a lukewarm feeling to it um and yeah. i was i was thinking like the co-op was gonna be like oh because like every time i don't know it seems like every time you see something like that you have the single player campaign and then oh here's a couple co-op missions that yeah. you know, are kind of the side but no it's like after you get through like the tutorial mission it's instantly it's like hey do you want to bring someone in? i'm like whoa yeah. yeah and then it goes like multiplayer games central hub mm-hmm, kind mm-hmm. of deal and, and and i like it i think there's potential so we'll see We'll see what happens. I, I I just wanted to call out my position shift on that because uh, I think we were both very like, man, no. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. It's it's definitely different. Uh, yes, Everspace Two going early access in December. That's great. I can't wait to play it. Uh, I'm even more excited about the next one. I I actually highlighted this on Twitter as well. Uh, if you want to talk about that, I will just say I bought it day of release. Yeah, I think I, I think we both uh, did a the Kickstarter thing. Uh, That's right. I, I did kickstart it um, after I talked to you. That's what it was. Yeah, and we, you know, we saw the packs and it looks great. And you know, everything. I think they do a, a weekly stream or bi-weekly stream or something. And again, fantastic looking even a pack. So you know, the fact that that how much more time has now passed, it's going to go into an early access I state. Think great. I think um, it's gonna be great. And, you know, if, if you're a Kickstarter backer, you should have gotten those emails, uh, kind of alerting you to that fact. And if you're not, then definitely keep out, uh, look out for it. It's going to be hitting steam first. Uh, and yeah, so early access. And so I don't, I don't know if they have a launch date yet. Um, probably not. A lot of these early access games, like Everspace one, did it right. They're probably going to do a year's worth. That seems to be the standard. I think. Yeah. I, mean, I, I want to say, yeah, months. one. Yeah, one took about that long. Uh, I don't think it went through. I don't, I don't know. I, just, I don't know if it went through early access. I know it went through a, an alpha state and all that because I did the Kickstarter on on Everspace One as well. Um, and again, mm-hmm. worthwhile investment. Like Everspace One, fantastic game. Still, still a great game. Uh, so I'm looking. Oh, this for, looks like it's gonna be looking fun. hella forward to two. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm eager. Like, and more or less, I've gotten to the point where I don't really like. You know, if I I back a game or early access game. More so, I'll, I'll jump in when I first do that, or if you have the capability of doing that, and then then I'll just kind of put it back on the shelf. Um, yeah, I'm kind of doing here. that for uh, Subnautica too. So it's like I am not playing like like with Subnautica, you know, one now. Uh, I would I would jump in quite frequently whenever they did updates and like check it out. It's like and you got a lot of the story along the way, and although they did save stuff for ultimately in the end, it's like it's like now having done that, it's like you know what. I, I'm not touching any of Subnautica too. Yeah. Like, like I, I yep. see, I see like pictures and stuff, and like that's as, as much as information as I get on it. It's like, ooh, that's some that's some neat looking stuff. But I am, you know, I'm not watching any videos. I'm not running, you know, yeah. playing the early access. Like, I want to kind of go in completely fresh because it was such a great experience. You know, seeing it from stem to stern, and I've kind of taken that tact 
with almost everything else, uh, you know, assuming story is there. So like things like Star Citizens, like the story's not really there in, in the PU. So it's like, okay, that's safe because all this mechanics, you know, you're, you're just playing mechanics and that's it. Yeah. Um, and so I'm kind of, you know, doing the same. I'll probably do the same thing with other space too. I'll like, you know, I pop my head in, just see how it's doing. And it's, like, the mechanics. Yeah, it's like, yeah, this looks great. I'm loving what I'm seeing. And then, you know, just kind of keep it on the shelf, make, make sure I don't, you know, kind of get too spoiled to, you know, the, the story. Cause it, it does have yeah. a decent story to it. Oh yeah, for sure. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I, I can't wait to, can't wait to play it. Like everything I saw at PAX, I was like, yes. Great. Yeah. <laughs> so great. And then um, speaking and of which, uh, yeah. I think uh, the packs you know, online now, uh, I think kicks off next week I think for Labor Is Day weekend. Really? I think so. Yeah. Interesting. So okay, we, we'll have let's, to, check let's it keep, out. keep our ears to the ground for that one. Yeah, that might be worth a little streamy episode. I have to say. Um, oh, and this next point, this is also something I bought day of release. Um, I'll let you because you you were there. You went to the Abbey Road and uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but yes, I, I bought this day of release this week. Yeah. So <laughs> if you've tuned into any of my Twitter feed or you know any of, even our previous show, you know that I went to uh, the live recording of the album in Abbey Road in London Studios back in Feb back before lockdown before COVID went all crazy. Yeah, nuts. right before. Like it, like it was it, like uh, it, looking back, it was like, man, I was so fortunate to be able to you know, like do that. Cause you know, it, when I remember going through the airport and they were asking everyone questions, like, have you, have you traveled to Wuhan? It's like, and have you, do you have a fever or anything like that? Now they didn't have like, you know, temperature guns or anything, but it's like that, right. that, that was like the bleeding edge of, you know, lockdown in early February. Cause it was, you know, basically a month later, everything started, you know, shutting down. So it was, well, you know, yeah, and then we went to PAX. <laughs> yeah, 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 we, yeah, at the end of February, we went to PAX. Like, like, yeah, like that entire month, that, that was like just like the bleeding edge of just like the yeah. last of being able. I'm, and I'm so glad, like, you know, uh, you know, one, we didn't get sick, which is great. But two, I, I am supremely glad that we 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 did, you know, the PAX thing. Yeah. I, and I was able yeah. to do my London yeah. trip. Because holy crap, it's just like the like I I I, I don't say like cabin fever, but it's like you know same thing with like you know Microsoft twenty twenty. Like I've been looking at this stuff, like where do I want to go next? Ah, yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> like Kyle and I were talking about, it, we're like, man, I hope we can do that next year. Like, oh, and I'm like, probably not, but it's good to dream because like that was such a great time. We had oh, such yeah. a blast. It was so good. And, but it was one of those like I remember even talking about it with you after where it was like. We were flying home and like we're in Logan Airport, and Kyle and I are like, you know, and again, I'm not even trying to be like, uh, I would never, you know, do this, but like there were some people, uh, with face masks on, and and it was like, oh, fuck, like this is kind of getting real. Like, when did you ever see people before this walking around with, you know, with a mask on? Mm -hmm. And it was just like, that's where I was like, oh, man, I, I think we might have just dodged a fucking giant bullet. <laughs> um, yeah. and I think and I'm pretty sure we did. Um, but yeah, um, his album released this week, the Christopher Tin yeah. album, Shiver yeah, the so Sky. Yeah, so yeah, Christopher Tin is, is the composer. He's he's done the uh, Civ Civilization Four, uh, most famously Baba Yetu. So if you've enjoyed that music uh, soundtrack, like pick this up. Yeah, to Shiver the Sky, it's about... Uh, basically kind of history of flight and you know everything surrounding it you know, from like the early days you know to like mythology of like icarus and whatnot all the way up into like the space age and having um the choir actually sing parts of kennedy's speech of like going oh, wow. going I'm to the moon that. uh yeah that's in the it's in the final, I still haven't listened final. To the whole thing oh yeah yeah you got you oh man it's so good yeah uh but yeah the the final Final track is actually uh, yeah, Kennedy's speech, kind of put to uh, I'd say almost operatic style form. Oh my god! I'm not and, sure. Yeah. So and it just a fantastic album, uh, you know. And for me, it's like it was even more a treat because you know I heard it in pieces, like you know, because I heard the orchestra and then I heard parts of the orchestra and then at, in the evening heard heard the choir do its thing. 
And you're kind of like yeah. putting it all together in your head. And you're like, oh man. I mean, it was still, it was still completely like, awesome I to hear it. <laughs> it's I like, I know it. that part. I know that part. But now, like, when you hear the album, when it's completely mixed and put together oh. as one piece, and you're like, it's just like, wow. It's like, mm, just, it brings me back. And it's just, it, yeah, it's a fantastic album. Pick it up, especially if you're, you know, not only into his stuff or, or even just like into orchestral, you know, you know, kind of that. I say soundtrack. It's not a soundtrack to anything. It's just, you know, uh, well, I, I take the back because they, they call them concept albums where there's it, a story it, to it. Yeah, the, yeah, there's a story to it. Signa de, de Valare was used as part of Civ Six, I think. It was the, the, no, the, main say, the opening, tr- yeah. the opening yeah. track. Yeah, is, si- si- yeah, is, the opening track is the menu track of Civ Six. Yeah, it, like you when know, you open up Civ Six, like that's what's playing. Yeah, and yeah, so. You know, in you know, it's available on all platforms. You can uh, uh, hear it uh, like on uh, I think Amazon streaming has Spotify. it, Spotify. Yeah. yeah. So you know, if you don't, if you if you're not into buying it, like you can at least listen to it and like you know, please do that. And, you know, like we're all kind of plugging it. And, you know, to try and like pump it up. Like I think it made like top so ten good. of the of the orchestral albums. I think for the week so far. So yeah, you know, check it out. It's well so worth your time and so awesome. Yeah. It's so well produced, and it's just beautiful music. Like I, I bought it on uh, the iTunes Store, and just hearing the Civ Six track again, and like uh, again, just in, produced so masterfully. It was just like, oh my god, it's fucking beautiful. Loved it. Um. Okay, and then the next one. Oh my god, Gamescom. <laughs> oh boy, oh, Gamescom. <laughs> um. I walked away from this feeling weird. <laughs> yeah, like it, like you know, it, it was some of like, okay, I expected this, and then and then the other half was like, what? where the hell did this come from? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, um, the Warcraft animated series looks very interesting. Uh, like you're saying, uh, I love the lore from these games, and I would love to see a really good series dive into that. Like I always thought that game would make a great anime. Oh um, yeah, and. and- so- yeah, I mean, almost anything from from Blizzard in terms of story, like you know, from Diablo to Warcraft, is like just some really good story to them. Oh, great storytelling, and you know the fact that they're doing you know, and I, I want to say they did this with the last expansion as well for Warcraft, um, mm-hmm. where, where they kind of introduced kind of like this um, quasi, you know, moving moving picture is the yeah. best way to describe it because it's not fully. You know, I, I say it's not fully animated in terms of like. Um, you think like a cartoon or an anime or something like that, but it's kind of yeah, like, it's like the, those animated comic panels. In a yeah, way. yeah, that's yeah, it's animated. Like, yeah, like, that's Ben Burns comics. Yes, exactly like that. It's animated comics is probably yeah the best way to put it. Uh, but yeah. still, like it's still a great story. For sure. So. No, I, I can't wait to see it um, or see more of it. Uh, yeah, the next uh, one. Yep. Uh, go ahead, <laughs> Uh yeah, Dragon Age Four. Um, I appreciate what they showed, which was concept art and some stuff about voice acting. Uh, didn't see any gameplay unless I wasn't paying attention. It, it, not really. Like it, it felt, uh, you know, it, it's like one of those behind the scenes things, and it's like, okay, this is what we're working on. This is a, what it's going to look like, and some of the fighting mechanics. And they had basically like kind of a gray gray boxing uh you know oh. of what an attack would look like but nothing like like you said it wasn't actual gameplay um you know it's like Do you okay find it concerning a little yeah i mean i i know what basically they're they're trying to hype it up and you know do this like oh this is stuff we're working on and you know it's it's in the works but it, what would really for a while yeah it's like that and the, the biggest thing was running through my mind the entire time that was playing. It's like, you know, and I couldn't get over the fact was can Bioware recover from Andromeda and the Anthem? Um, I mean, maybe and, that's why they're not showing the gameplay. Maybe they just don't have it yet. Uh, I don't know, dude. It, like, yeah. It, and that's what's worried. Like if it wasn't it, like, if this was, you know, if, you know, either Andromeda or Anthem didn't exist or if they had some measure of success and not the, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be worried complete, you know, you know, desk plant, you know, failures that they, they kind of, you know, Andromeda, like hands down and which is kind of like this, this petering out, so to speak. Like, it, I don't yeah. think it failed out of the gate, but it was very much like, it was like deflating balloon. 
<laughs> yeah, I I find this concerning because I thought it had been in development for quite some time. Um, I want to say it has, it, like it's since three, I think. Yeah, it's it's been a long time, and the fact that they're not showing gameplay is very concerning because that means one of two things. Actually, it pretty much only means one thing. And I think they did change directors recently, which is never a good fucking mm. sign. Um, I feel like this game has been scrapped and rebuilt again, um, which I'm fine with if it results in a better product. For from what I read, that was a lot of Anthem's problem. Um, was the, like the whole scrap it, rebuild it, start fresh, and then like, you know, pretty much anyway. I don't know. Um, well, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of like the, it's a double-edged sword. Like, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I can't think of an example where we've heard that happen and it was a at least moderate smashing to success. Yeah, moderate <laughs> to smashing success. Yeah, like, I can't think of anything that where that's happened. And it's, it's that double-edged sword of, like, obviously, you need to restructure, you know, games to, to make them work. Um, yeah. And, but... There's there also there's a drop dead point where it's like this you know I say studio in the sense of like in, the, in this case it'll be EA yeah. EA yeah. will have enough and say okay put something out because we've dumped so much money into this you know we need yeah, something back so. or or they or they kill it off completely <laughs> and now you know with something yeah. like you know Dragon Age Four you know it's like you know the, the fact that they, they've advertised is like okay they're at least on the committal pass of like of, of like they're trying to build something. And, you know, they're going to try and get to the end here. So the question yeah. is, when will EA's patients run out and say, you've got, you've got to produce something and kick it out the door? And the question is, will it be ready by that point? Or will it be a case of basically because of the restructuring and they had to completely rebuild it, that yeah. it, it falls flat in its face? It just sounds like to me, uh, their EA is doing what they always do, which is there's too many fucking cooks in the kitchen again. And it's just fucking Bioware over. And Bioware doesn't help because it's like you heard the complaints with a lot of the other games. It's like, oh, there was like four different managers with designers with different ideas that were supposed to be like one lead designer. That never works, man. Like, and it sounds like they're making that same fucking mistake again. But who knows? Maybe we'll be surprised. Well, uh, uh, that was the other thing. Like, wasn't it introduced by Casey Hudson? I thought he had left or something. He had left, and okay. I guess he came back. Okay, <laughs> that's even yeah. more worrisome. Not that he, not that Casey Austin's bad, but it's just like, why? Well, yeah, he didn't really do good on the last outing. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I'll just say my hopes are slim uh, for Dragon Age Four. I would love for it to be great. I love that series with all my heart, except for two. I did not like two. Uh, that was like, hey, we can get other kids to play this too. When Dragon Age 1 was a fucking role-playing, like, amazingness, and it's like, now what? It's a fucking twitchy action game, you asshole. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like 2 was like that. a complete shift. Yeah, they're they're trying to do something that it didn't really fit into, I think. But Yeah, at least... That's I just think my opinion. I'm with you. I think Inquisition <laughs> got it back on the right track, though, and I really enjoyed Inquisition. But anyway, uh, the next one, Doom Eternal DLC. Meh, I could give a shit less. Like, More uh, shooty but shooty face. I enjoyed it, but once like their shitty copy protection stuff came to light, I was like, "Fuck oh, you!" Yeah. I've never touched it again. Uh, Fall Guys season two uh, already. Another game I need I need to pick up because this was, looks hilariously awesome to play. Oh, it looks it looks like Most Extreme Elimination Challenge. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to play it. I have it on I have it on PlayStation. It looks great. Um, I haven't played it yet though, and I'm gonna play it. Uh, I got it on. It was like a free, you know, like the PlayStation games with gold or whatever they call it. Uh, it was free for the month it came out so that you could grab it and it was yours to keep. Ah. So yeah, I can't wait to play it. It looks great. Kyle said it's a really, really good time. Yeah, I keep hearing good things. Uh, Little Nightmares, that looked very cute, creepy, interesting. Kind of like Ori in the Blind Forest looking graphics, but even darker. Yeah, uh, like Sackboy meets you know, Sackboy, yeah, like, creepy puppet mode. Yeah, like I liked what I saw. Uh, the next one, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah, talk about a left field. Like, I don't. Uh, wow. Well, okay. All I mean, right. The, the, I'll try uh, to uh, say uh, this without having a stroke. Yeah, I will say they they set up on a decent tangent. They started off with uh, Star Wars Squadrons. Again, I'm still super hyped for that. It it looks fantastic. Oh, totally. um, looks awesome. I, I saw some things like the, again those callouts to XVT. Like they had this uh, the tri uh, triangle pad station 
which was a hallmark yep. of X-Wing TIE fighter. You know, every time you went yep. against a, a small station, it was that little triangle, like radiation looking, you know, symbol yep. looking station. And they had that in the the trailer cool. footage. It's like, yes. Oh, like yes. if, if you yeah, know, they're hitting my nostalgia buttons, which I don't know if that's good or bad, but I'm going to lean on the good side. It's like, yes, more. Give me more. Uh, I'm leaning on that. It looks good. Yeah. And then, then, then they, then they switched to the Sims and it's like, okay, the Sims. And then suddenly Sims, Star Wars, uh, uh, two, <laughs> like, okay. Trip to like two, which is, is the Disneyland, uh, uh, section. I don't know what you call it. World section yeah, of, of, of the park. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's both in Disneyland and Disney World. Um, the world but, of Star Wars. But they're they're doing a tie in with The Sims, which I did not see come because I mean they don't. I don't think they've ever done any kind of no. real world tie in with Sims. Any of the Sims, not just Sims Four. Um, the one Sims like that did the rock and roll expansion, like Avril Lavigne was in it, and I think that's like okay. as close as it ever got. You know I mean? <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, you know, tie in line. But yeah, it was, just, it was like full on. And maybe I don't know. Maybe this is another one of those like it ties in well because of COVID or what. But it's like you get to take your Sims to the Batu and you get all, yeah. get all these crazy stuff. You see all the characters. Um, again, you, you want to talk about another YouTube algorithm. It's like, it's like again, travel vlogs are, are terrible for watching oh, now yeah. because it's like, Oh, these are all the places people went and like, you know, oh, people- like, oh, I, sorry, I, saying, I watched the guy go through Harry Potter world. I was like, I'm never yeah. going to get through Let's see. And I was like, Oh, this exactly. is fucking awesome. Yeah, it's great. It's all, I, I love watching it because it's like, you know, it's like okay, I don't have to spend like a million dollars to <laughs> go to these parks and yeah. hotels. Like, well, and it, it might actually be great, you know, you know, for those that actually do, you know, I'm not saying don't go to the parks, um, but you know, once, once we right. get to a sense of normalcy, it's like it's actually a great way to actually preview what's actually yeah. there and get some tips Plan on out what you want to yeah. see. Um, but you know, for those of us who you know don't necessarily you know, want to spend that much just to go. Um, it, it's great because you get to see like all, you know, sometimes they tour the hotels, they do, you know, tour all the various parts of the park. Um, yep. a lot of, you know, and not really behind the scenes, but, you know, just kind of like, you know, like tips and tricks of the park. And it's, it's like, it's so cool. And, you know, like, you know, yeah, they've toured by two. It's like, eh, that's actually pretty cool. And apparently it's, it's, it's gotten better over the year. Yeah. It, it's interesting. Uh, uh, I was like, yeah, milk that cow, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so you got, yeah, you got this weird tie. And it's like, well, I, I didn't see that coming. Uh, that's uh, talking about pulling in another audience. Yeah, uh, exactly. Interesting. Oh, and your next point uh, that made me think back to Wasteland Three. Um, so uh, the next uh, release that we saw was COD Call of Duty Cold War. Uh, it has like multiple endings through player choice. Sounds kind of interesting. And Nick makes a note here of all I can think of is the Reagan SNL. <laughs> yeah. Well, we gotta do this here. And <laughs> well, hello, hi. It's my birthday. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, in Wasteland 3, because uh, again, this is a, a nuclear disaster after a certain point, you know, in, I think it's in the late 80s, and then it's, you know, years and years later. But there's a faction uh, to the east of Colorado called the Gippers. <laughs> they win worship, one for the Gipper. They worship a giant robot AI. That is an AI of Ronald Reagan. <laughs> really? Wow. I haven't gotten there yet, but I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, uh, it, uh, it looks interesting. I mean, obviously, as somebody like Nick and I, who, who grew up during the Cold War, mm-hmm. uh, especially yeah, some the of Reagan the, era, you know, you know, in the Reagan era and stuff. So it is interesting. Uh, we'll see how that happens. 12 minutes looks super screwed up. I can't wait to play it. Oh, super uh, awesome. All star cast. I, I saw they had um, Defoe, yeah. uh, um, the guy that was in uh, do- the Dune sci fi miniseries that played uh, Paul Atreides, I think. Or, uh, uh, I can't think of the name. Yeah. Scary. I forget. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it looks like a great cast. The story looks really deep and messed up. Oh, like, yeah. And this is just from a quick preview video. I was like, wow, I can't wait to play this. Because uh, I just, I love a good story. So that looks cool. Uh, one game, I, another game I saw, I was like, huh. 
was Lemnis Gate, another Shooty McShooter game, but it kind of mm. gave me an Unreal Tourney vibe a little bit, mm -hmm. just with the, the looks and stuff, so we'll see. Uh, Age of Empires 3 Definitive, that was a fun oh, one. Oh, yeah. Um, Christ knows we played enough of that back in the day. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I'll bite there. I'll, I'll jump on board that game again. Be good good uh, 4X RTS, you know? Yeah, you know, the Age of Empires 1 and 2 remasters were really, really good, so that should be a lot of fun. Um, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond VR. Wow. Oh, that wow. Yeah. Another, like, came came out of nowhere. And as soon as I heard that, like, Medal of Honor theme, like, oh my God. They yes, did, you yes, bastards exactly have done it. it. <laughs> yeah, and, it and, and funny enough, you like you know b before you we started, you were humming the the, the uh, band of brothers <laughs> theme. <laughs> yeah, and, and Very this, close, by the way, to yeah, that. yeah, exactly. And and yeah, like, like I was watching, like, oh yes, this looks awesome, looks great. Uh, yeah. And then the only catch, at least for me, and I know I think you you have it, so you're fine, but was the fact that it's an Oculus exclusive. It's like, oh, you got to be well, kidding you get me. The little thingy though. Uh, I, I, I can get it through re revive. I can get through revive, yeah. um, but it, you know it, it's it's basically the hoop jumping that sucks because it's like oh man, yeah. and and more recently uh, you know, I'm a little more miffed on the what's going to happen in October with Oculus because it's Facebook. You have to have a Facebook account and tie it. Now you know it's like now that's not necessarily a problem for me. I have a Facebook account. I'm not like exclusive. I'm not like a oh down with Facebook or whatever. Fucking Luddite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not. I'm not that far. But at the same time, it's like okay, th th you know, that's a little ridiculous to force your users to to basically have a Facebook account and to log I in to be able to play that. How long that's going to stick? To be honest with you, um, frankly, I, I think it's a. I think it's a terrible idea. And now, and I feel it's different than logging into an account that you have with like you know, because obviously you know it's like we have Steam account, we have the Epic Game Store. You know, it's like like that. You know, that's that makes sense. It's a login account, but it's strictly for your game library. Whereas yeah, with Facebook, yeah, exactly. Like I feel like it's it's crossing a weird line, and you know, Facebook has been you know kind of doing this for years, but it's like crossing that line of like, yeah, that's your social, you know, you know, real life network thing, and like all that connection there. Yeah, and it's like you know, and, hof and hopefully that. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say here's why I think that's stupid. The VR market is it's not that it's niche, but it's not a big market. So yeah, why are you gonna, exactly why it, yeah. gonna do some why are you gonna do something that might limit it further? Yeah, like, that, that, that's why I love everything that Steam has been doing with their index. Like like you know, it's like, you know, yeah, we'll make the device, but everything on Steam, you can play it on whatever device you like and you can intermix stuff. It's like you know, like Steam is the role model, and you know, it's like you know, oh, awesome. Oculus is starting to become the dunce in the corner. Type, I feel it's like, and it's not like the equipment's bad. It's just like it's just you know, I feel it's being managed poorly. Yeah, it just seems like a really stupid model. Like I don't know what they're trying to do. I don't understand how that's beneficial. Like I can understand if everybody had a fucking Oculus. Yeah, and it was this huge thing that everybody wanted to do all the time. It's just not. It's not there yet. Yeah, um, and like I said, it's it's niche, and it's still on that like prohibitively expensive side of things. Yeah. Like it, you know, the price is coming down. I think the cheapest set is what three, four hundred. I think something like that now yeah, these it's days. Expensive. It's but, not I mean cheap. That, that's that's the price of a console for something where you know um, it doesn't. You know, granted, uh, you know, like you know, like you just said here, this, this is an o uh, Oculus exclusive, so they do have some exclusivity. But, but then it, you throw in like unless you have an you get the Oculus Quest, yeah. you also need a good computer to run it. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that's probably yeah, it's probably the better kickers. Like consoles, like boom, you plug you know, you buy the game, you plug it in, you're good to go. You know, maybe you buy peripherals like you can make the army for like you know PS uh, four VR. It's like yeah, you got to have the console plus the VR system anyway. But you know, it's it, I think I, I think it actually that's the cheaper one because I think what is that like. 150 200 off the top of my head something like that um so that's probably like the easiest entry into yeah. vr but the, yeah you're talking <laughs> pcs like and you need some heavy hardware it's like it's not gonna yeah, run you, on you need a good <laughs> fucking pc to run yeah VR. it's not you're not gonna run on a clunker it's like you need a decent one and it's like you know yeah and again that, that's part of that whole like niche thing and you know in vr is not necessarily for everyone either like you know i mean no. 
It's just I, a I, dumb move, man. It's yeah. a stupid fucking move. Yeah. Like, that's not a market you want to limit in any way, shape, or form. It's already prohibitive enough. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. All right. So let's move on. I uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll skip the next one. It was just a preview video. It looked like a cool concept that uh, Unknown 9 will wait to. Yeah. yeah it like, it, it intrigued me. I wanted to see gameplay, and then, then they didn't deliver. So it's like, oh, sad face. The trailer looked great. Well, that's, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Um, Warhammer Age of Sigmar Stormground gave me all the fucking Warhammers. Looks like a great <laughs> yeah. strategy, XCOM tactical game. I'm all about it. Um, I'm, it seems I'm like there, there's Warhammer. a ton of Warhammer. Like, cause, uh, there was something at the Xbox one, right? There was some FPS, or is that yep. the same one? Or is that no, a there, there was an FPS one that's totally different. Okay. Totally different. Got it. Yeah. So, yeah. No, it's, it's, there's all kinds of shit. Um, that is coming out uh, in the Warhammer universe, and I love it. I love that this universe is getting so much attention because it's a lot of fun. It's a damn lot of fun. Um, so yeah, I'm stoked for that. I'll add it to my already massive Warhammer library. Uh, Crash Four, Crash Bandicoot Four. Yes, yes, yes. The, this, you know, you talk about like you know trailers and gameplay. Like, like this was like spot on with the gameplay portion of things. Oh my god, did this look cool? Like it, it was intense. It, like I. I yeah. it, it, <laughs> I mean, it's called it's called what uh, uh, through the through the not Discworld, but <laughs> what was it called? What's the subtitle? Uh, give me a second. I'm with you. Anyway, uh, while well, you look it up, yeah, like you know, basically, it's, about time. <laughs> it's what Crash Bandicoot Four. It's about time. Oh, it, it, wait, it's about time. I thought it was like through the through the parallel verse or something. Uh, no, no. It's it's Trash Bandicoot Four. It's about time. Oh, it's about time. Okay. 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 Um, but yes, uh, to your point. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> it looks uh, yeah, great. It, yeah. It looks great. Uh, like basically had one scene where like they're, they're like ripping, you know, the fabric of time and space apart, and you're, they're jumping through like all these parallel worlds, and it seriously looked like something out of Doctor Strange. Um, yeah. And I like, and it was like, boom, 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 boom. Like, it was just, it was like one after the other. Like, it wasn't like, you know, loading screens or everything. And the way they're doing it is like, holy crap. Like, and, and we've kind of seen this with, with several other game concepts. Other game, yeah. Um, saw- it was the Xbox one. I can't, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, but it Same was deal though, like parallel universe. Yeah. Kind of it was like two, yeah. It was two split oh. universes side by side on that one. We, I, you know, I thought it was a co op, but it was like you're playing two worlds at the same time. And I'm wondering, you know, is this because the technology has now finally allowed for that with not only like, I, I want to say they were doing it behind the scenes of Bandicoot. And it was thanks to not only the like chip hardware, but also solid state drives allowed it for loading of like all mm. these, all these worlds. And I'm, yeah, I think you're onto and I'm wondering, you know, are we to a point where like the technology is allowing these concepts or it, like, Oh, yeah, again, like it, it, it's weird that we've had several. You know, like, I, you know, I think there's Crash Bandicoot, there's the X uh, Box one, um, and I want to say there's a third one that I, or something similar. And it's like, is it because that, or are we getting like the Hollywood double up of like you know two asteroid movies in in one year type thing going on? <laughs> I don't know, man. It looks uh, it looks cool. It looks so cool. I I just I always loved those games. I had a blast playing them on PlayStation. Yes, I know. I hear Jeremy in my head up. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It looks really good, and like you said, I think the technology is allowing for these really awesome like simultaneous world play. Uh, it's interesting that this is the second thing now that we've seen in upcoming gen that has that. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Uh, the next yeah, one absolutely. that just made me roll my eyes was Outriders. Mm. Um, that looked like fucking Destiny. At least by the trailer. Like, you could play the Destiny 2 trailer and play that side by side, and it, to me, was like, alright, someone convince me this wasn't like a <laughs> Destiny 3 that got scrapped and renamed like I don't know maybe it'll be good but I was just like okay it's another Destiny uh, sort of not that I don't like Destiny but it just seems like this is like a blatant copy of it almost yeah um, it kind, kind of like along that lines I mean it's from Square Enix so you know completely different and this could be a, yeah. again the Hollywood double up <laughs> maybe they'll do it right not only yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, we'll see what happens, but 
Uh, and then uh, Searching Simulator 2. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, again, th- like, again, half of the stuff on here was just, like, these weird tie-ins from, like, you know, the, the Sims Batu one and... Oh, what was the other? I don't know. There's several other things. This one really took the cake because w- they they teased the hell out of me. And like you know, I will I will testify testify to the fact that if I hear like five seconds worth of of like a theme thing, <laughs> I can call out exactly what soundtrack is being used. Yeah, him him and I both like yeah. <laughs> we've done this many many times. Like, like five seconds. Like, oh, oh, that's Band of Brothers. Like, oh, like, 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 yeah. <laughs> And like they played the, the the intro, you know, theme to Back to the Future. I'm like, oh, Back to the Future game, and I got all excited. And then oh. it's like, and then like, you know, Dark, you know, uh, Chris Lloyd as Doc Brown comes on. I'm like, Oh my God, it's gonna be something Back to the Future. And then it's like, and we're introducing Surgeon Simulator Two. I'm like, What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Why does this have to do with anything? <laughs> I'm sitting there in my chair going, if I just had half a stroke, Nick's dead on the floor. <laughs> they were, they were, they were, they, that's right. They were pushing all my nostalgia buttons. Like, come on. Cause I'm mean, going to have the, the old, uh, the telltale, uh, uh, back to the future chapters. And like, those yep. were, those are hella fun. And, oh, they were great. Yeah. And then like, it's like surgeon Slater and, and they, and I, I can only think the way they were pitching it was there's a doctor in surgeon simulator, Here's Doc and Brown. He's a, he's, a, he's a doctor too. He can introduce it. It's like, oh my god! I was it was it was this weird like total cringe and like oh, face so death palm bad. at the same time. It's like, oh, and and not to take away from Surgeon Simulator, like that actually does look like a fun game. Don't get me wrong, but it's just like Is the tie in. I don't think so. Uh, okay, but or at least if it is, it's multi. Uh, you know, you can do it on PC or you can maybe do it through okay. a headset. All right. No, I just, it, it, I was looking at some video and I'm like, that looks like a VR game. That yeah. VR. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, like the whole concept of the controls, like you're, you're able to control like one hand or something and, you know, you, yeah. you rotate it, you know, your mouse or whatever. Um, and it's a great party game. But yeah, it's just like the, the tie in of back, like, I don't get it. Like, where are you going with this? Like, like, I feel like the only people who would get that are you know older fans or yeah. you know they did make a like a rick and morty kind of mention at the very end it's like you know he's like i'm, I'm the doc brown and not the like from that other guy he's like i think that was a rick and morty you know yeah. <laughs> tie you're not tie but uh kind of like i don't know what do you call it snub maybe uh, yeah i don't <laughs> but, know but it's I, like who's gonna get this <laughs> like i'm sitting there going you just spent more to market this than you'll probably ever spend <laughs> on the game. no right or than you'll probably <sighs> ever get selling the game but whatever so um, yeah we're, uh, let's say worst tie-in of the entire event was that one it was just so bad like and then not again, not taking anything away from Chris. He's amazing. Oh yeah. N- like, nothing against Chris Lloyd or again, yeah, nothing against like, the, the like, two things. Like Sergio Samuel looks great. Chris Lloyd, like he's fantastic, but like whoever, whoever came up with the idea to put the two together, they, <laughs> they need to go. Like, I can only imagine Chris like going, why the fuck am I here? <laughs> um, Here's the money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got it. Sign me up. Axel, <laughs> That's right. Oh my God. But, all right, uh, that will bring us to the end. We don't have any voicemails tonight, um, and we didn't. Uh, I didn't do a question of the bye week mainly because yeah, I, I, I figured the games. I figured the games comp coverage would be pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good in depth, which it was. Um, I, instead of the game of the month, uh, we it was time to pick a new one. But what I'd really like to do for you know, I think almost everybody has Netflix these days. Um, Let's, you know, everybody listening, save pointers, anyone that has Netflix, let's all watch High Score over the next two weeks. That's a, a six episode series. I think they're each like a half hour, maybe 40 minutes. I think it is just a half hour episode each. Um, and, like, let's take a watch and I'll make a post in the save point. I'd really like to discuss this um, with, with, you know, anybody that watched it. I mean, we all kind of grew up in this era. Uh, and this is a big nostalgia button press, and there's just a lot of really, really amazing information. Some stuff I didn't know, you know, some stuff I did just because I read a ton of this stuff. But it's it's really fun to watch. It's really well produced. Uh, Richard Garriott just had some great airtime in episode three. It's just another 
Like, uh, I just want to chill with him. Like, Richard, I don't, I, I don't know if you listen. I get the feeling you might, which would be amazing. But I, I have some weird impressions that I, he might be sniping an episode here and there. I just want to hang out with you one day. Then let's just talk D and D, and you know, post COVID world, we could even do a Zoom if you're available. It doesn't even have to be an interview. We could just, you know, shoot shit, talk games. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's it's really, really well done. It's a lot of fun to watch. And if you grew up, especially if you're around the same age as Nick and I, and you've been playing, you know, games since the you know Atari or Nintendo era, you're going to have so much fun just watching this. Like the they interview all the names like they had an interview with the i think his name is john kirby like the guy that the lawyer that um <sighs> went to there was a lawyer for nintendo that went to court over against universal studios uh that sued nintendo over donkey kong saying it was copyright infringement and um and he wound up winning and nintendo loved him so much they made a character based on him and that was kirby like dreamland kirby uh, just like little shit like that i didn't know that um, but yeah, uh, the, 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 the interviews they got with Miyamoto and, and just, I mean, everybody, it's just amazing. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. So give it a watch. Um, I'd love to talk about it with you, Nick, and talk about it in the save point. So I'm going to, I'm going to start like an official discussion thread when we're done here and we can all start talking about things we liked, things we didn't like, and we'll talk about it on the show, uh, in two weeks. Other than that, let's move on to the conclusions, final thoughts, and shout-outs. Uh, obviously, a big shout-out to the fans, everybody listening. We love you guys so much, and thanks to everybody that continues to get the word out. Retweets are, you know, little release blurbs and all that. We really do appreciate it and appreciate all the feedback. And uh, just thank you for coming back every week or every other week and giving us a listen. We do appreciate it. Um, I do want to take a minute um, to give a quick... Well, not quick, but a big thank you, shout out, and goodbye uh, to the podcast that we have been shouting out since our very first episode, uh, and that I've I made it a point to shout out ever since because they were so kind to us when we were getting started. They were so happy to give us tips, uh, advice, and friendship. Uh, I'm I'm pals with all of them. Uh, they're just a really great bunch. But the Everyday Gamers officially released their last episode this week. Um, hanging up the mics and they're, you know, doing different things in life now. And, uh, the everyday gamers podcast is, is officially, uh, you know, officially closed, officially defunct. And I'm, I'm sad to see them go, uh, just because I really did enjoy them. Uh, they really were a big inspiration for me to, to, it showed you can just have a really great podcast, just chilling out and talking video games with your friends and, um, just being welcoming to everybody and being cool. And, uh, yeah, I really appreciate you guys. They gave us a really nice shout-out in their goodbye episode as well, and I really do appreciate it. I appreciate your friendship with all you, Chris, Meef, and, and Eric, and all the crew over there that I, and the people that I met through that show. You all have been really, really awesome. And I wish you all the best of luck. I can't wait to see what all you all do next. Um, and thank you. Thank you for all your kindness uh, since we started almost three years ago now. Um, big shout out to the Bad Fodder Figures. Uh, hope y'all are doing well. I'm loving their, the live element of the show. I always miss it, and I keep listening to the the audio replay. I will try to make it on Sunday and uh, hang out with those guys on their Twitch stream. Uh, shout out to Married to the Games and Tap the Craft. Uh, all those podcasts, great podcasts, great people. Go check them out. Go enjoy the show. Uh, they're all great. Uh, Married to the Games is another group of gamer dads and just family folks and very cool, very friendly people. Uh, and just very funny. Very, very funny. And uh, very uh, kid-friendly, too, if you have kids. It's a great podcast to listen with your kids. Uh, if you want to hear some cool video game stuff, that's Married to the Games. Uh, bad fodder figures, they're more like us. We just say fuck every five seconds. Uh, or at least I do. Nick's getting there. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tap the Craft is a great craft brewing podcast with Danny Luce and his crew. Um, it's great. Check it out if you're into craft brewing. Uh, different, you know, microbrew beers. They just their depth knowledge and they make that concept the, the that that subject matter really fun to listen to. Just check them out. 
Finally, if you want to hang out with us uh, and you want to get involved in the discussion about high score, go to tiny.cc slash save point, join the, the book club for games, and we'll start talking about high score this week. Uh, you can email us, theretrorents at gmail.com. We're on Twitter at the Retro Rents at Retro Rents Al, and Nick is at Black Eagle Ops. Um, we're all on Twitch under the same handles. And then finally, Nick, is there anything you want to promote or shout out that you're doing right now, aside from cruising the cut? <laughs> uh, again, check out Christopher Tin's album. Uh, totally awesome. And uh, yeah, check out to cruising the cut. The <laughs> yeah, to shiver the sky. <laughs> all right. With that, we will close episode 63. Thank you all for listening. As always, if you enjoyed it, please leave us a review on iTunes. Those help us out a bunch to get the word out. Um, please, so please feel free to leave us a review there. We'd really appreciate that. And otherwise, keep spreading the word, keep sharing the links, and we will catch you all next time. So until then, have fun, play games, and don't be dicks. Peace. <laughs>